I have heard many conflicting things about socialism. Some people tell me it means a form of government where there is only one political party. Others tell me it is where the state owns all the companies. And yet still, I am told it means social welfare programs and a redistribution of wealth. I am confused. There is lots of confusion about socialism and capitalism. Socialism does not refer to any of those things. Let me explain. Socialism is a socio-economic system, a specific mode of production that is distinct from capitalism. It consists of both a specific underlying economic mechanism and a set of social relations that emerge from this base. Wait. So you are saying socialism will be an entirely different type of society from capitalism? That is correct. Because it is an entirely different type of society from capitalism, it will be very difficult to understand from within the framework and logic of a capitalist society without a point of reference. Therefore, it would be appropriate for me to define capitalism first. I know what capitalism is. Capitalism is where goods and services are exchanged in a free market. That might be an element of a specific form of capitalism, but markets by themselves predate the existence of capitalism and are not exclusive to capitalism. In fact, they will probably continue to play an integral role in socialism. But markets are not the defining characteristic of capitalism. Capitalism is a system structured around the accumulation of capital. Capital refers to money, usually profits, that are reinvested into production in order to realize even greater profits, which themselves will be reinvested into the economy. This perpetual process of accumulation must continue, otherwise the system either stagnates or goes into crisis. I see. But where do free markets and private property fit into all this? Free market capitalism is only one possible institutional configuration for a capitalist economy. It basically means that price formation takes place without any external interference by the government. There are two other major forms of capitalism. Economic interventionism, or regulated capitalism, where the government plays an active role trying to correct market failures through the use of regulation, or tries to improve the outcomes by increasing the efficiency of the accumulation process through monetary and fiscal policies. Sometimes these policies are poorly designed and end up meddling with the free formation of prices. But the underlying mechanism of accumulation remains the same. Production is carried out to generate a profit, and this profit is reinvested into the economy to realize even greater profits. The third major type of capitalism is state capitalism. State capitalism differs from the other two configurations in one fundamental way. The state engages in the accumulation process itself, usually through owning business enterprises. The organizational structure of the enterprises remain essentially the same as under private capitalism because they are both structured around the accumulation of capital and operate for profits. I see. That makes sense. But what is so bad about this process of capital accumulation? It is not a question of good or bad, it is a question of obsolescence. Capitalism is becoming increasingly insufficient. In other words, it is an increasingly obsolete mode of organizing social and economic affairs given our current level of technology. The real question is, at what point do the costs of maintaining the system outweigh the benefits? Please explain, how does capitalism become obsolete? First I should mention that different forms of capitalism come into existence when older forms become insufficient. Capitalism might have started out with small businesses competing with each other, but eventually with increasing returns to scale and the necessity of large-scale production came more concentrated forms of ownership in the form of corporations and even state enterprises. Production and other affairs within the production process became increasingly specialized, and a division between owners, managers and workers emerged and intensified. But this in and of itself does not alter the system of capital accumulation, only the institutional configuration of capitalist society, as for capitalism as a whole becoming obsolete. The key is technological progress. As technology improves, especially in terms of automating the workplace, productivity increases, making business more profitable. This productivity produces an abundance of profits. But remember that capital must accumulate. 
to compound the issue, with increasing automation and productivity, the total demand for labor decreases, reducing the purchasing power of the working class and contributing to structural unemployment. But back to capital. This capital must go somewhere, so we have to find new areas for profitable investment. There are a few ways of doing this, I will briefly cover some of the most important ways. The first is the creation of economic demands through advertising and practices such as planned and perceived obsolescence, so that instead of satisfying economic demands and human needs, the need to accumulate capital drives the process of consumption in order to keep the system afloat. This is commonly called consumerism. The second way is the creation of new profitable industries through the privatization and commodification of public services, such as prisons and public infrastructure. The third and most important way is the creation of entirely new industries that in themselves don't actually produce any real wealth. This would include the expansion of financial services. The excess capital flocks to these industries but because these new services do not produce any real wealth, they are prone to producing economic bubbles and crisis. This is ridiculous. It sounds like all of us, society as a whole, are enslaved to our own economic system and the artificial need for constant capital accumulation. This is true. And while that is not the entire story behind the economic crisis, and in no way explains the entirety of capitalism, it is sufficient for the purposes of this video. Competition also plays an integral role in capitalism. It compels businesses to adopt cost-cutting measures, thereby accelerating the process in which the system of accumulation becomes insufficient and costly to maintain. Capitalism becomes unsustainable when there is an over-accumulation of capital relative to opportunities for profitable investment. The arguments about which of the three forms of capitalism are most efficient are irrelevant because it does not address this process of accumulation, which is the very essence of capitalism. In fact, the most efficient form of capitalism will ultimately be most efficient at exhausting the variability of capitalism as a whole. I think I understand. So, in essence, capitalism is a system where society and individuals serve the perpetual need for the constant accumulation of capital, and if it does not, the system goes into crisis? Bingo! Capitalism is a system where society serves the need for the continuous accumulation of capital. That is why it is called capitalism and not something like free marketism or privatism. This underlying economic process influences our individual lives, the way we relate to other people, how we view the world around us, and even our priorities in life. And this brings us to socialism. Socialism is simply a system where the economy serves the needs of society, the exact opposite of capitalism, hence the name socialism. Production would be organized to directly satisfy the needs and demands of society and individuals. This is often summarized by the phrase, production for use. The accumulation of capital would cease to be the driving force behind economic activity and the means of production would be owned cooperatively, either by those who operate them, or by society as a whole. And just like under capitalism, in socialism there are many possible institutional configurations for organizing economic activity. Realistically, an actual socialist economy would consist of a mixture of various cooperative, individual and public enterprises coexisting with each other, in the same way existing capitalism contains many different models of private ownership. But this is an entirely different discussion altogether, now that you understand the difference between socialism and capitalism, you tell me why social welfare programs are not socialist. Righto. Social welfare programs do not change the fundamental dynamic of the system, production is still carried out to generate a profit, and usually the means of production are still privately owned. If anything, social welfare programs sound like something that enhances and legitimizes capitalism. At the most, it deals with the symptoms but not the root cause of the problems it tries to solve. That is correct. Welfare programs and unemployment benefits are only some of the costs of trying to maintain capitalism. They are corrective measures designed to keep the excesses of capitalism in check. As the system becomes more obsolete, especially with the increasing displacement of labor by automated industry, the more social welfare programs the system requires to stay afloat. I see. That makes sense. Hmm. What is it? 
maybe we should start considering broader approaches to social and economic issues from outside the narrow framework of capitalism. The debate is always oscillating between regulated interventionist capitalism and free market capitalism. But this narrow array of possibilities fails to take the fundamental issues of the system into account and limits our prospects for the future. And now, my friend, you are beginning to understand the socialist perspective.